do that ever work. I love that. Hey everyone, Jedi Joy here from the Jedi Joy Rich Show. What day is today? Is it Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah. Man, all the days have really ran together here in Vegas. It's been, ever since the shutdown. It's like I really don't know what day it is. It's crazy. So here's the thing. Today, TJ Lavin blocked uh, Jedi Rich on his Nikki Jedi channel on Twitter. And then I just got blocked by Roxanne Lam and his wife. So I'm gonna get into the whole backstory. A couple years in the making. <laughs> if you guys are interested. So TJ Lavin, if you guys don't know, is the host of the MTV show The Challenge. Um, and he is also a, a BMXer. He was first a BMXer, he was one of the best BMXers, I think, you know. And then he um, he got injured and um, almost died. I mean, it was very, very serious. I forget what year it was, but it was very serious. He was in the hospital for a while, and um, it was a big deal. So we always watched the challenge. We watched like every season except for maybe the current one, um, because we used to actually watch a ton of reality TV, and we loved TJ Lavin. We used to tweet him a couple years ago. This was like way back, actually, probably like this was like 2016. We would tweet him, and he would sometimes heart things and stuff. We were not even really tweeting back then. It was like uh, we had like one account, very different than now. Um, and we just thought it was super cool, and we loved that show, the, the challenge. We liked the real world, all those shows for, on MTV. We watched every season, and they had ones in Vegas. And, but we were really big fans. And um, then we started um, tweeting him um, or uh, Instagram. Okay, jump forward a couple years. You know, we lived in the cave and all this, and then we started um, tweeting him. I think when we lived in the cave, and then um, he started hearting our stuff on Instagram. This was like in 2018, and um, we thought that was really cool. And we're like, cool, you know, because it was CJ Lavin, and we, had, you know, watched the show and um, all the seasons. And we're like, this is so cool. And he, he lived locally, and him and his wife had a, a thing where they have a gym in their house because um, they have a really cool house, I guess, out in Henderson somewhere, and they have it open to where you can pay and. Um, go to their gym, like they have it totally set up like a regular gym and then they charge people in, because um, Roxanne Lavin, who's TJ Lavin's wife, is a, a personal trainer and a nutritionist. And that's why this whole thing, why I am gonna get into the whole drama. Um, but so we first were like, that would be so cool, because I was struggling with my weight still in 2018, because I had been bulimic for 15 years. And then I was trying to figure out the diet, and so I was still struggling. I thought, wow, how cool they're local. Maybe we could go work out at their gym. And so I was checking out Roxanne's stuff um, often, and I really enjoyed her page. I was like, oh, this is cool. I didn't really know much about what she was doing at the time, but I found out later, you know, she's vegan. But I just thought, oh, cool, you know, they're local celebrities. And then one day I went to go look on her page. And, oh, wait, let me jump back. So one day we tweeted a funny um, tweet to TJ Lavin. I don't remember exactly what we said, but we were making some joke because we, we just thought it was hilarious. And I was wearing this shirt that I got in Panama, which you guys know we're going back to Panama. And it said, it had a picture of a pig with sunglasses. And it says, I was bacon before it was cool. And all along, you know, I didn't know they were vegans. And I just happened to be wearing this shirt when we sent it to them. And um, literally didn't think anything of it. And until maybe like a week later, I go and I'm looking on Instagram and I'm like, Richard, I think Roxanne Lavin deleted her profile on Instagram. He's like, what do you mean? I don't think so. I was like, yeah, I, I can't find it. It's just gone. And he's like, wait, so he logged into his. He's like, no, it's still there. I was like, that's weird. It took me like forever to figure out that meant you were blocked. Like when you couldn't find someone's profile. Like I didn't even know that at the time. I was like, oh, uh, how am I blocked? Like, I didn't know she knew I existed. I'm like, how am I blocked from a celebrity's wife that I didn't even know she knew I existed? It was so confusing to me, and I was like, okay, so I, I just draw, I went back and we go, oh, I was wearing that shirt, and they're very big into veganism. And I was like, well, maybe I offended her with this shirt. And it really bothered me, because, you know, we had kind of thought maybe we could get to go to their gym, you know, you could, they had it open to pay to go to the gym, you know, um, and obviously that was out the window once I got blocked, and so I decided to reach out to them and say, hey, you know, you guys really hurt my feelings that you blocked me because I don't know what I did. Now, this was like two years ago, you guys. This was like two, 2018. So instead of her owning up to anything, 
and admitting maybe she blocked me for whatever reason, she lied to me. And she wrote a message on Instagram and she said, oh my God, I don't don't know how you are blocked. I've never blocked a person in my life. I didn't even know how to block. I'm so sorry. It was, you know, I don't even know. Like this whole ridiculous lie, which of course everyone knows how to block and every celebrity knows how to block. So just saying that is insulting in one way because you're acting like I'm a fucking moron. If you think that I think that you don't know how to block when you're a celebrity's wife, when you did block me, like I doesn't the app doesn't just mysteriously block people that are looking at your stuff. That doesn't happen. If it did, that's a really messed up app and that's gonna be a big problem for celebrities if their fans are looking at their stuff and it just randomly blocks them. That doesn't happen. And so to even say that is insulting my intelligence, but I took it for two years. I said, fine, and I said, okay, I'll take your lie and I'll just accept that you're gonna just say that and I'm gonna like accept that, oh, the app just mysteriously blocked someone who had sent a photo to your husband with a shirt you didn't like because it said something that about meat. And the other thing is we are huge proponents about encouraging people to eat meat. And so throughout the years I've looked at her posts and she harps so much on people that eat meat. I mean, it is horrific. She calls us murderers. She says like we're destroying the environment. She says that we are dying from eating meat. She says that meat is what's killing people, that that is the problem with obesity is meat, real animal meat. Are you insane? Real animal meat is the healthiest thing you could ever consume. And it is not a, a, a preference of flavor. It is a preference of your health and sanity. My mother did a diet like Roxanne Lavin and she decided to kill herself because she was so depressed from the amount of sugar she was consuming and caffeine from an all vegan diet. So I feel very strongly when people say that it is smart to eat an all vegan diet and that you're gonna die from eating meat. When I have spent the last four years figuring out what to eat after getting over bulimia and I realized that meat is the best thing for your body and I know because of my health my husband lost like 130 pounds TJ Lavin and Roxanne have gotten fatter since the time we have interacted with them and I'm not, not trying to be mean that is a fact and the reason why that's important is because when you tell people that you can eat fucking ice cream to lose weight is what she writes in her post she says you can eat fucking ice cream and still lose weight which is 100% false you cannot eat ice cream and lose weight you can maybe once in a while if you think have a snack but no you can't actually our society thinks you can you cannot every time you eat that amount of sugar you cause so much havoc in your body and you cause so much issues with your insulin production and insulin tells your body to store fat so every time you mess with your insulin levels you're gonna tell your body to store fat and that's what caffeine and sugar both do you end up with so many deficiencies from being vegan than if you just ate proper healthy exactly. meals. Exactly, and guess what you guys, here's the other thing. I was a vegan for 12 years when I was young. I decided to become a vegan when I was 12. No one was a vegan when I was 12. That was not, no, there, I got one book that I got from Barnes and Noble that I had to read about how to make my own vegan meals. There was no vegan options anywhere. There was no vegan restaurants. There was no vegan labels anywhere. This was in like 19, 95 or something, I don't remember exactly what year, but around there in the 90s, that's when I grew up. So vegan now has become a trendy thing that all the celebs are jumping on, where most of them are bulimic, is the real truth behind after they tell you all to be on a vegan diet, yeah, they eat all that sugar and then they go throw up. And they say, oh, it's great, you can be thin just like me. And a lot of times that's what a big portion of the celebrities are doing. I don't know for sure about Roxanne Lavin. I know she works out a lot. She might just overeat and work out, which is another eating disorder. It's called um, exercise orexia. When you work out to eat, like you overeat and then you exercise to compensate for your overeating. It's still an eating disorder. Ivanka Trump sounds like Andre the Giant yeah, today. Um, Ivanka Trump is a bulimic, 100%. I did a thing about Ivanka Trump uh, many years ago. 100%, I know that without a, a doubt. 
I was bulimic for 15 years. There's many signs that you can tell. And some people I know without a doubt. Roxanne Lavin, she's got several of the signs, but I won't say for sure because I, I don't know 100%. Ivanka Trump, 100%. Miley Cyrus, 100%. Justin Bieber, 100%. Haley Bieber, 100%. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Ariana Grande, 100%. Seth Rogen, 100%. Um, Henry Rollins, 100%. Goes on and on. I mean, it goes on and on. All of these people are bulimics. And if you don't believe me, you are insane to think that a celebrity would not throw up. They're allowed to overdo everything, right? They're allowed, they're about excess. So you think they're not going to eat and throw up? You think they're going to say, oh, I'm going to for my whole life restrict because I need to look fit, so I'm going to restrict my whole life. I'm a celebrity. I can do whatever I want. I have millions of dollars, but I will never eat a cake. I'll never do that. No. No, of course they eat their cake. They eat their cake and then they throw it up. And then they tell you guys to go on a vegan diet because look how thin I am on a vegan diet. Well, guess what? It's catching up with people because even bulimics are getting fat now. It doesn't work because the food is getting so bad in the amount of sugar that even if you throw it up, your body is still processing so much sugar before you can even get to the bathroom in time to throw it up. And so it doesn't matter. You're still going to gain the weight. And that's driving vegans in uh, vegans and bulimics, which are almost interchangeable these days. Because here's the problem with the vegan diet: it's extremely high in sugar, and sugar is highly addictive. So if you're on a vegan diet, you're going to be constantly wanting to eat and constantly hungry. And I know because I've been on that diet, and you are never satisfied because sugar turns off the sense in your senses in your brain to tell you you're full. So what'll happen? Happen, no matter what you eat when you eat sugar you will never feel full so you'll drive yourself insane because you'll never feel full so you overeat everyone does and they say oh I don't know I don't, I don't have self-control it's not the self-control it's what you are eating is messing with your brain so now you think you are starving the term starving oh I am starving comes out of sugar withdrawals because when you don't eat sugar, you never feel starving. You might feel hungry. Your stomach might even start growling. But the starving, where I get lightheaded, those are all called sugar withdrawals. Hypoglycemia and diabetes are all just from eating sugar. And cancer spreads from sugar. So if you cut out sugar, you will not have cancer either. Bottom line, we act like there's no cure for cancer. It's called not eating sugar. Me and Jedi Rich know that we will never have cancer because if we got it, it would not spread. You have to feed cancer sugar. We don't eat sugar on any level. The only amount of even that you would count as a carb that we get is from collard greens and garlic and organic collard greens, organic garlic and organic kale. The only other thing we eat is organic beef. So we cannot, and we only drink water. We drink sparkling mineral water. You guys know I love my Topo Chico's. Here we go. I need one right now. This is all we have drank since 2018, is water. And we have never felt better. So when I talk about what, it doesn't matter what my background is of people say, well, are you a doctor? I'm telling you because I did what worked for me. And if you look at me, I'm very thin. People will often try to say we're on meth because we're so thin. No, we eat insanely healthy. You're very attractive. You can be this thin by eating right. We don't even work out that much. We just eat right. Collard greens. So, Roxanne Lavin, for example, is someone, the reason why I go at her, I'm not trying to pick on her. The reason why I go at her is because she is a nutritionist that actually teaches classes. She does a Pilates class and I think several other fitness classes where people come to her for advice on how to lose weight. And she tells them all that matters is don't ever eat any animal product. That would be number one for her because she literally says you're a murderer. I don't know if she tells her clients that because I'm sure she says whatever she needs to do to get paid. So she maybe works that in later. But her, no, I'm serious. I mean, because she actually did this thing where she cooked meals where she is 100% that eating meat, you're a murderer. But then she was cooking chicken for people. We said, oh, interesting. So as long as you're making money, it's okay to be then uh, selling chicken. But if someone eats it, they're a murderer. Yeah, okay. So I'm telling you that the hypocrisy is just through the moon. I can't take it anymore. For two years, I kept my mouth shut about this. And it's just, she attacks meat eaters like crazy. She literally one time said, 
I can't even believe that someone would tell another person to eat meat. What is wrong with these people? These people that murderers and encourage other murderers. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? Eating meat is a part of nature. Are you going to house every cow that we don't eat now? When they decide to, that, I mean, is that your plan? When, uh, are, uh, Roxy, are you going to take in every animal that doesn't have a home because now we're not butchering them? Are you insane? I mean, these are insane concepts. So here's the problem. Roxanne lives in the mentality of the 1990s. And that's when she grew up, because she's in her 40s She now. blocked me a couple times just for asking questions. Uh, she's insane. I mean, she's absolutely insane. The woman is insane. She lies, but, too. I mean, that's she a big lies. thing. She lies. She obviously knows how to block. She knows how to block. She blocked, oh, that was the thing. She blocked me within seconds this morning of me saying anything to her for the first time. After lying to me two years ago that she didn't even know how to block, doesn't even, can't even imagine, and that she never blocks anyone is what she said. So, but here's the deal. Her concept of um, diet is that it's all about fat and that you can eat as much sugar and fiber. As long as, as long as too the sugar has fiber, then it's fine. So fruit you can eat till your fucking cows come home, although she don't want cows, so just eat the, eat the fruit. Which, you guys, fruit is extremely high in sugar. You cannot eat fruit till the cows come home. You need to be only eating the cows. Fruit is not healthy. In tiny doses it is, like in three berries a day. That's your antioxidants that you might want or whatever that people say, oh, you get all these wonderful things. Uh, for one thing, when they say that it's help cancer, remember cancer is from eating sugar. Cancer spreads from sugar. Cancer lives on sugar. If you don't eat sugar, you don't have cancer. It's bottom line. Same with candida. Same with all these diseases are fed by sugar. Cut out sugar. Woo, all the diseases go away and you don't even need medicine besides weed. We like our weed. So that's another thing. I have many things with these lavins that I got to get into because they are bigots. And people, oh my, you are a bigot if you say that if you eat a different food than me, then you're not allowed in my club. Or um, TJ Lavin is also sober, so he's big on, you know, the alcohol is the devil. But then no, no Roxanne goes and hangs out with people that are drinking, which is weird, but then TJ doesn't go with her. I don't know if he doesn't go because of the alcohol or doesn't go because he doesn't like her. I don't know. They don't hang out together. It's very strange. They're married, and she goes on trip after trip with her supposed girlfriends, but never to, it's very weird so but that's the relationship i don't need to bag on that but here's the thing they go around and they're giving advice to other people that's completely wrong and they are depressed as shit we have seen them get more and more depressed we ran into tj lavin at whole foods for one thing i've never met a more rude individual in my entire life i was actually stunned by how rude he was to us i thought even just as a celebrity you would just pretend to be nice to someone that said they were fans. We were fans. I mean, usually you just turn on maybe your celebrity charm for a second. He was ruder than I can even describe. I mean, we were stunned. We were like, we're like, oh, is he just an asshole? And we were wrong. Like on TV, he looks like a cool guy and he's just the biggest fucking dick because that's how he was. We ran into him at the Whole Foods and we're like, hey, TJ, this is after I've already been blocked by his wife out here. So they know who we are. He looked at me like I was insane. I was like, hey, TJ, because he was behind me in line. Hey, you know, hey, we, you know, interacted on Instagram. You know, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, just scowled at me the whole time. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then G.I. Rich comes over. And I'm like, hey, look, at see, G.I. Rich is so excited. He jumps over the fucking table at Whole Foods, almost falls over his chair because he was sitting there. Because he's like, oh, TJ laughing. He's so excited. And TJ just like, this was like a couple years ago. And all this stuff we've held back. And then, so the reason why. I went at this um, recently is because I was looking at Roxanne and I, I always she's bashing on people eating meat and that vegan is the healthiest thing and that it's all about fiber. Her concept is that all that matters is fiber. Just this fucking BS. I don't even know. She read some book that some doctor said that it was about fiber. So now she's on this trip that fiber is what's more important than actually eating protein. She says it's not about protein. She literally said it's not about carbs. The carbs don't make you fat. That that's a misconception. I think any doctor will tell you that carbs make you fat. And I think any human that has eaten a bunch of carbs and then has eaten some protein will tell you the carbs made them a lot fucking fatter than the protein. She said it's not about protein. And then she says it's all about fat. And for one thing, there's two different types of fats. She clearly doesn't understand that. And one of them is good and one of them is bad. She thinks fat is all the same. So when she compares, she says that it's about everyone that's all these heart diseases. It's because of the amount of meat they're eating, there's the fat and the meat. 
No, it's uh, if you're getting the trans fat, that's not from meat. That's from the other fake stuff, from all the crap that people have made, almost the vegan options. When you're eating meat, that is all good fat. All good. It doesn't clog your arteries. All that was actually proven wrong in the 90s. They realized that was wrong. They did that in the 90s. What they did is they took all the fat out of everything, and they said eggs were bad. Remember all this, you guys? They were saying the cholesterol, and they uh, put sugar in everything. Instead, they took out the fat and added sugar. That's where the flavor came from, because fat has a good flavor. If you take out the fat, it tastes like nothing. So they added sugar, and then everyone got addicted to sugar. And then they realized that it wasn't those fats, that there's good fats and bad fats, and that they were wrong, like they're always wrong, that they keep changing our pyramid, and it's always wrong. Um, and then people just somehow think it's right, I don't understand, and they listen to people like Roxanne Lavin, and the real, uh, reason why it makes me so mad is because my mom ate like that, and she got more and more depressed as she got older because she was on an all-sugar diet. She thought it was all about eating fruit and salad. And that's what she told me my whole life. Oh, just eat as much fruit and salad, but just don't eat anything else, you know, and, and you'll be great, but it made her nuts. I mean, eating that high of a sugar diet will make you depressed. And people are getting more and more depressed, and they're resorting to things like bulimia. So these celebs are 100% bulimic because you're telling me that a celeb like Ariana Grande, who got $8 million to show up at Coachella, didn't have any incentive to throw up if maybe she had eaten a couple of too many Oreos right before the show on accident because she was like, oh, you know, maybe even drinking, oh, I kind of ate too many nachos, and I got a tomorrow show up for an $8 million performance. I'm not even going to consider the option of bulimia. If you don't think that a celebrity would consider that option, you need to wake up. Because it is very prevalent in our society. And the big signs are hoarse voices. Um, so you might say, my voice is hoarse. This is way better than it was. I could barely speak in 2016. I stopped bulimia in 2015, struggled for a little bit in 2016 and 17, and then I finally figured out what to do, and that's what we do now from 2018 on. And so I have not been bulimic um, from 2018 on without, like, no, um, no bouts of any sort of, um, you know, where you f uh, fall out because all of those occur when you're still eating the food you were eating before. You cannot recover from bulimia if you continue to eat what you were eating. You have to change your diet, and that's what we did. And it took a couple years for me to figure it out, and that's when we finally figured it out, and the caffeine was the big culprit. Caffeine will encourage bulimia because, for one thing, it makes you more depressed and it tells you to store fat. But it also gives you this false energy where you're running around all day. Because I'll explain about the caffeine if you guys don't know why caffeine actually makes you fat. But it gives you this false energy that you think. So then you end up doing a lot more things and you usually don't eat during that time. And then when it comes later, you end up overeating because you're like, oh, I'm so famished. I've been running around all I have is coffee today. I mean, how many times do you hear people say that? What'd you eat today? Oh, just coffee. And, now, and then they, end up overeating when they finally eat because they're so famished um, and that so it really even the behavior of coffee encourages bulimia but the what it really does on the deeper level is a caffeine um, actually dulls your senses it numbs your hormones that's what it does so it makes you not feel as hungry or feel as tired but you actually are still those things so what it does is it numbs all your senses and so one of the uh, senses that you don't and the hormone that you don't want to numb is your insulin production hormone. So insulin is what um, regulates your sugar in your body, in your blood sugar. So when your blood sugar rises, your, your body starts producing more insulin. Well, what happens when you drink caffeine is your insulin that normally is regulating your blood sugar now is going to be chilling because it goes into like a dormant mode. That's what that it numbs that sense, so it doesn't produce as much insulin. And that's why like you feel like not as tired or not as hungry because all of your senses are dulled. But then what happens is your blood sugar rises and then your body says, oh, I need to produce more insulin. So it starts producing more insulin. But then when those other ones are, and the coffee wears off, those other ones start producing again. So now you have like too much insulin in your body and too much insulin in your body is bad. Well, for one thing, too much can actually kill you. That's what some um, diabetics die because they OD on taking too much insulin. Um, but what it does is it tells your body to store fat. And it tells you to go into dormant mode. It tells you to um, go into like hibernation like a bear. Like don't exercise anything. It tells you to just be sleep. So it's coffee.
Coffee is actually does opposite of what you think. You think it's giving you energy and not making you tired, but at the end of the day, it's actually making you tired and fat. <laughs> so when we cut out caffeine, it, it just cured everything. I mean, and when the weight just started to drop, which we don't even, I mean, we're, I don't want to get any fitter than I am. <laughs> I know I'm really small now, but I don't try to ever lose weight now. We just eat what we eat the same day, uh, the, the same thing every day we eat our organic beef burgers or any kind of organic beef options. Sometimes we do stews, sometimes we do um, uh, bone broth. Uh, we've been doing a little bit of wild shrimp lately just because we're opening up to a little bit of wild fish as we go to Panama. But we're all about organic meat. And we don't like the chicken because they feed the chicken too much corn. And corn is just so genetically modified at this point. And it's just really bad for you. Corn is really bad for you. It has no nutritional value. So if they're feeding an animal all corn, then you're just getting like no nutritional value when you then ingest that animal. Like that animal needs to be eating better food. So the chickens, unfortunately, they're not giving them the best food. And the cows that we eat are grass fed. We don't do the ones that they give them that you know, grain. We don't like that stuff. So what the animal eats is also what you're now going to consume. So that's why organics are important because they don't have the hormones and steroids and uh, genetically modified organisms and antibiotics and all that stuff. When they put that in the animal, and not just the animal, so Roxanne Lavin would say, that's why you don't eat meat. No, it's in everything, you guys. It's in your fruits, your veggies. They're putting all those hormones and steroids and antibiotics and everything and colorings to make the fruit look a certain way, to be a certain size, to be huge. People like big apples now. They don't want a tiny apple like this. They want a big old apple. Well, they had to genetically modify that to make it that way. So whenever you consume something that is genetically modified and told to be bigger and larger, you're also going to be that way. And that's why people are getting bigger and bigger. And when you cut out those things and you eat all organics, you're going to get smaller and smaller. And that's what's happening to me in Jai Raj. We literally just shrink. Like, I'm a smaller size than I've ever been in my life. Like, I was, like, very, very young. I wear, like, extra small now. I never was extra small. I was, like, medium most of my life. And now I'm, like, most things are just too big. And it's, like, I don't try to lose weight. If anything, sometimes I'm trying to not be so thin. Sometimes I'll get too thin. But it's literally we just, when you only eat, like, we do our three meals a day. And then sometimes a fourth option of like a soup, you know, like the bone broth, but, um, and we're completely satisfied. Like it's not that I'm sitting here hungry, like I'm so satisfied. I eat too, I am full, like I'm stuffed. Um, and I eat two to three burgers a meal. That's what we do, we do these little like, you know, these little um, beef burgers you guys have seen if you've watched my things, I tweet about them all the time and then all our stuff. Um, if you ever are looking for us, I'm primarily on Twitter is my biggest thing I like. Like every day I'm tweeting on Twitter. My thing is Jedi Joy Blog. So if you're ever like, where does she go? I'm always on Twitter. <laughs> every day. But I'm always posting stuff of the food we eat too because I want people to see what we do. So like if you are struggling with your weight, like that's why I'm always trying to help. And I get frustrated when people are giving people false information. And especially... Um, if there could be potential lies in there, like a lot of the celebs are lying in, in the sense that they have bulimia. So uh, I think I keep, you know, losing my train of thought on certain things. So some of the signs for people with bulimia are the voice is one thing, a super hoarse voice. So Ivanka Trump is totally losing her voice now at this point because what happens is you damage your vocal cords from the constant vomiting and all of that acid coming out of your stomach. So the acid in your stomach is really, really harsh on your body and when it comes up it destroys your esophagus and all your digestive tract and your vocal cords and that's why uh, I sing now and people laugh and <laughs> we just did a video on YouTube oh gosh where I sing a song and I, could, I miss so many notes and I cringe and I'm like oh my gosh and I'm like I feel like people think that I think that I sound good <laughs> does that make sense people think that I think that I sound good but what we're doing is we're showing my bulimia recovery like I couldn't barely talk a couple of years ago and now I'm learning to sing. But people <laughs> misinterpret our things thinking, does she think she's like the next Celine Dion or something? <laughs> One time someone said, who do you think you are, Barbara Streisand? I said, well thanks for even putting my name in the same sentence as Barbara Streisand as singing. Because that is just a compliment to even be in the same sentence because my Singing is also part of my depression recovery because my mom killed herself when I was 20 years old. And then my brother died two years after that in a motorcycle accident. So I was depressed as shit for like 12 years. Um, and that's when I was like really hardcore in my bulimia. I mean, you guys, I tried to kill myself several times too. I mean, 
it just never worked. I would take a bunch of pills and I'd vomit them in my sleep and then wake up, which is never fun to wake up after you just tried to kill yourself. And that's why I don't really like care how some people care, you know, like they're so worried about certain things. I'm like, when you've already tried to kill yourself a couple of times, like, and people don't believe that I should, I'm like, no, I took a whole bottle of pills. Twice I took a whole bottle of pills and twice I vomited them up. And then the third time, um, I tried to cut myself and that didn't work so well. <laughs> but, um, I had to whistle that. Um, people were ready to slip their own wrists. I started cutting myself up. Man, that hurts. <laughs> but um, it's serious. And I don't mean to laugh because it's very serious. My mom um, shot herself in the heart when I was 20 years old. I was in the Air Force. I was doing really well. My life was going pretty good for me. And then, bam, my mom shot herself. And it was like, <sighs> and I had to deal with that at 20 years old. And um, I didn't know why at the time she did because I didn't know about that. I still didn't really understand because my mom, you know, she had suffered with depression a couple of times, but she was overall a very happy person. Most people that knew her were very stunned by her suicide. She didn't get depressed till like a couple months before she died. She had been depressed when I was young, uh, when I was five, but then she got over that and then she'd been like extremely happy, almost like manic, you know, it's a little bit manic, depressive, a little bipolar. And um, then they moved to Oregon, you know, when I was in the Air Force and it was too dark and depressing up there and she didn't have her friends and she just couldn't take it. So she killed herself. Um, and um, now I realize it had so much to do with her diet because she was very uh, concerned about um, the, how she looked, but she always wanted to be thin. And she had struggled with eating disorders, more anorexia. Like I started with anorexia because of my mom. I mean, she pretty much taught me anorexia. It was like, we did not eat much when I was young. It was like, you ate so minimal. Um, and I know that that played a big impact because the sugar, she was highly addicted to sugar, and sugar, you have these ups and downs. And most of the bipolar disorder is actually sugar related. If you look at most people that are bipolar or even schizophrenic, Richard's sister is schizophrenic, full on schizophrenic. I mean, she roams the streets. We barely see her. We, we haven't seen her in a couple years, even because you barely see her. Well, once in a while, see her if we pop into George's mother's house, but it's hard. You'll see her for a second, she might say hi, and then two seconds later, she'll snap on you and start cussing you out. So, it's very serious schizophrenia. She breaks stuff. I mean, she ends up, you know, cops can call all the time. She just gets so upset. She's a very small girl too, but she gets so bad. She's tall, but she's super thin because she doesn't eat. And that's the big thing. She starves herself. And when she does eat, she eats just sugar. And I always tell Jerry Rich, if she could get on a better diet, and I even tell Jerry Rich's mom, but it's, it's, you know, some things it's just um, people can't understand, like, to the level that I, and I, it's frustrating because I want to help, but they don't, like, I Jared's mom wouldn't put her on the diet that we're on, but if she was on our diet, I seriously think her schizophrenia could be um, cured. Because um, a lot of times the schizophrenia is either, um, you know, it's very, it, it's dependent on things you're doing, you know, the medicine you're taking um, and your diet. It's not just mental, because She's been better before, and then she gets worse depending on you know what she's currently doing. And I have a brother that's autistic, so me and Jerry Rich know a lot about like mental health. Um, and so when I hear people giving wrong advice about diet that could actually make people want to kill themselves, I get very upset about that. And because my mom like had all that wrong information, so when I say about our son Lamb, she's stuck in the 1990s thing where it was all about calories in, calories out, it doesn't matter what you eat. She even said on a post that you can eat fucking ice cream. She said fucking ice cream. She said fucking. Um, I thought that was kind of a crude way to say it when you're talking about diet, but whatever. She, you, can, you can even eat fucking ice cream and lose weight. It just depends on your calories in, calories out, which is not the case. And for one thing, if you're eating things like ice cream, you're going to get really depressed and you're going to get fatter because of the insulin. So sugar also if you get, it could cause insulin issues. So you have the caffeine now is causing the insulin issues, but now too much sugar, too much insulin. It's your body, you can't just, people think that they can just eat all this stuff and it not really play any factor other than, oh, I got a little fat, but no, every time you're eating bad stuff, it's wreaking havoc on your whole body because your body builds on what you eat. So when you're not giving yourself the proper nutrition, you can't build the building blocks of your muscles and everything. And so your body, you're going to get aches and pains and you're going to have weird things. Like I was getting these weird um, 
uh, they call bone spurs. I have them on my feet where the bone sticks out. And I find now as I eat better, these are coming off. I, th I thought it was like just part of my body. No, it was my body was um, growing bone on top of bone improperly from where I'd had injuries because I was feeding it not the proper things to build my muscles and bones and everything back together properly like if I you know injured something so everywhere I had an injury there was so much pain and there's these you know like literally like bone spurs that's where the bone starts to stick out you know where you get at it it's it's uh, like calcium deposits on bone so you can use we use this thing called the jade tool let me go get it I gotta show you guys this so this is a jade tool we got it on Amazon I think it's like $13 or something it's jade a jade is a stone and when you rub this on like your bone spurs or wherever you have pain it literally starts to you'll hear like the um, I guess it'd be like the calcium deposits breaking and you can start to get some of it and they can hurt when you do certain spots like where you have certain pains like I get it bad on my knuckles like right here it hurts even to just rub this like this hurts right now I'm not even barely putting pressure because it has healing properties check out these if you have aches and pains you rub yourself it's best if you take a bath get yourself you know uh, some Epsom salt and use one of these but when you are eating improperly, your body is going to keep building improperly. So, especially the young children that are given these really bad diets are building their whole bone structure on like sugar instead of protein. So we're seeing people that have more fat than muscle than ever before. Like in the past, you'd see more athletic children. We're seeing them more fat than athletic, if you notice. Like kids have a higher percentage of fat to muscle now because of all the sugar and caffeine and just all of the crap the GMOs um, that just the um, everything has sugar if you are not watching your sugar then you are consuming so much more sugar than you think and the artificial stuff doesn't work either so that's the other issue with the vegan diet is if you're ever eating things that are artificial this is where the other insulin issue pops in so when you eat something artificial even though you think oh I can have all these free calories there's no calories and it's like free I can put I can put this amazing liquid in my in my water and it can taste just like a soda but it has zero calories like a crystal light or a, a and there's some other ones one of my clients was talking to me about one he's like, oh I'll just put that in there miso I think it colors and I don't remember I was like oh great idea so then I can just really kind of defeat my whole thing of why I drink water instead of <laughs> instead of smoothies and things um, because what happens is when you put the artificial stuff is even though you're not getting the calories, your brain, oh, something, something turned off. There's our GoPro, is done. I talked too long. Barry. Oh, I gotta switch the battery on that one. And then I, went to, I had to set a timer, you guys, for, let me see, because. There we go. Oh, yeah, I still got a little time, because I gotta work later, so I was like, oh man, as soon as I start talking too long, I won't have time to get ready. Anyways, so, um, what those artificial things do is your brain thinks it's sugar. So even though you thought, oh, I could have this like little flavor, like people get lime and lemon, I don't do any of the flavors on the waters. Don't do that. Because your brain says, oh, I got sugar. Let me produce insulin, even though it didn't get sugar. And what happens with the ones that are artificial, it, your brain thinks it got a lot of sugar because they're so much sweeter than sugar. So your, your brain doesn't necessarily know it, that it wasn't sugar. It just said, ooh, it's sweet. Okay, produce insulin. Like, cause your brain is all about survival and it kind of just does the easiest thing. Like it goes, oh, that's sweet. Okay, sh then produce insulin. And it doesn't say, oh, but that was one of them artificial things that everyone says doesn't count as anything. Well, those are causing a huge issue. And then, so you're producing more insulin. And like I said, with insulin, insulin tells your body to store fat. It tells you to go into dormant hibernation mode. It's not what you want. Uh, do I need to say that part again? Mm. Since we just turned on GoPro. Pro. Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, we got the GoPro going, and it's for our other. I think I'm gonna put it on YouTube or something, sometime. So let me say that again. So the problem is that going up. Yeah, insulin. Say it one more time for our GoPro. 
You guys got a GoPro. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's the coolest camera I've ever seen. I'm so excited. It's just like, it's smaller than I ever thought they were. Like, you know, you see them, but I didn't see them in person. I'm like, wow, it's so tiny. It's so cute. And it films amazing. But anyways, so artificial sweeteners or anything artificial. So even like those vegan meats can still be the same issue because if your brain doesn't know what it is, like if it goes like, oh, I don't know what that is because that wasn't something from nature. Like it wasn't animal meat or it wasn't, you know, a fruit or a veggie from nature. I don't know what that is, but it's really sweet. So I'm just going to treat it as sugar because everything breaks down to sugar. So sugar would be the easiest thing to just say, okay, that's sugar. And um, then it'll just produce a bunch of insulin. Now, the thing about meat, why it's amazing is it has zero grams of sugar, which is the only thing that has that. Only animal products have zero grams of sugar to their protein ratio. Like everything else has carbs in it. Even, you know, veggies, anything that you would say, any of these um, fake meat options, they have more carbs and sugar. Um, and sugar is carbs. So that people think carbs are fine just to catch it. No, it's awesome. Carbs are not good. Carb, sugar, same difference. Yeah, the white sugar is the worst thing you can do, but any of them, you still can't even have too much fruit that's still high in sugar. People think like fruit is like this free food that you can just eat copious amounts of it and it's fine. No, I mean, I would recommend at most having three, three blueberries a day. I don't even eat sugar, but I mean, that's the kind of, they're talking about like, what you gotta think is like when you were like, your ancestors, the ones that lived in the wild, like way back, what they could eat from what they found in nature is what you actually should be eating. That's the best for you as a human. Anything that we've created later now, our brain doesn't fully understand what it is. So it gets all confused and that's why we have more obesity than ever before because everything we're consuming, if you're not eating like me and Jenna Rich, is creating havoc on the brain. It doesn't know it's producing too much insulin and then we're having to get in the press and blah, 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 there's all this thing that's this, Everything's getting out of whack. All of your levels are getting out of whack. People are having more diseases and disorders than ever before in obesity. All because we're eating all this artificial stuff. And the problem with vegan diets is it's all about eating artificial stuff. Because they're, they're saying, like, don't eat meat, eat these meat options. <laughs> That's artificial. It was made in the lab. It's not from nature. And it always will have more sugar than the meat from nature. So the other issue, which I've talked about many times, is... Even if, like, let's say you're getting your seven grams of protein from each thing. Let's say we have a regular beef and we have our artificial meat. And let's say there's seven grams of protein. We're just going to throw out these numbers. These are not real numbers, but this is just for the scenario. Let's say we both have seven grams of protein. Well, with our real meat, like we eat, the organic beef, you have seven grams of protein to zero carbs, zero sugar. So all day, let's say you do three meals. So now you have 21 grams of protein to zero sugar. That's what we do. Over here now you have your vegan option. We have this Boca burger, or this impossible burger. <laughs> it's got all these weird names, they're calling them now. Um, you know, it, it's just anti-meat burgers. But um, it'll have your seven grams of protein. So let's say it has three or four grams of sugar, which they always do if you even look at the labels, they do. So now, to your 21 grams of protein, you now have anywhere from 9 to 12 grams of sugar. So now, day after day, even when you thought you were eating, let's say you just ate the patty, is what we do, we don't eat the buns. But now, even when we just compared the two patties, you consume so much more sugar as a vegan than as a meat eater. And now, that's if you were just eating the patty. I would say most vegans then add veggies, add, um, they add a lot of things. They now have artificial cheese, they have artificial ice cream, they have artificial everything. I mean, why I was going at Roxanne the other day, is, it was her birthday party or something, but she was devouring a cake and this huge pizza they all had. And I'm like, as a nutritionist, that should be not allowed. I mean, I know it sucks. You go, oh, you can't eat, you can't have your cake and eat it too. No, you can't actually. Maybe when you were five, and I still wouldn't recommend it then. But at 40, or whatever age people are, I'm 35, you cannot have your cake and eat it too. You cannot, unless you want to be fat and depressed. And that's the bottom line. You go, well, well I'm not fat. Well, are you happy with your weight? 
Most people are not. I am. I feel fucking great. <laughs> and I never did before. I struggled with my, I mean, I was like insane about worrying about my weight my whole life. That's why I try to tell people so that you guys can feel the freedom I feel. Worrying about food all day long is not freeing. You are a slave to your dinner plate. And so I'm telling you that it doesn't have to be that way by just choosing to eat meat contrary to what the vegans are telling people and that's why I get infuriated and then when I go to say something against that we get blocked if you even challenge what these celebs may be saying to people then you'll get blocked it's like okay I thought it was hilarious because um, it proved that they saw what we wrote but they wouldn't respond <laughs> it's like most people would actually maybe stand up for themselves or maybe like TJ should have stood up for his wife when we said that she was a cult vegan sugar addict. He just blocked us. Okay. Doesn't mean we're going to stop saying that because you blocked us. You know what I mean? It's like that's not the way to deal with people. You don't just block them and think it's going to go away. That's actually the worst thing you can do. So Jay Rich likes to say this to me all the time. Like, you should But it's so appropriate. Is like you can't just stick your head up your ass and get a pass. Like, that's not how the universe works. You can't just shut out the truth and think that you're going to live your life a lie and be okay with that. It's going to catch up with you. You're going to get fat and depressed. And that's what's happening to everyone, especially since the quarantine. People are more depressed because they probably consume more than they ever have because they were sitting at home. And, you know, it's so hard when you're sitting at home. And if you're on those diets, I know you guys because we did a lot of sitting at home. And I used to just obsess about food 24-7. We had... For a while, we were trying to do the fruit while we were doing organics, and we were doing almonds and fruit, and I would just obsess on the on the apples and almonds. I mean, I became, like, insane about that. It was just, like, an obsession of, like, oh, how many can I have? Oh, can I have had too many today? You know, and this is after my bulimia, but I was just so obsessive about this until um, this is before we cut out the caffeine, and then finally, and I was still even occasionally throwing up because I would push it. Uh, I, would, I would overeat on the almonds and fruit, and then I, I mean, I'd be like, damn it, even though I knew how bad bulimia was, this is in 2018, no, 17. Um, and then, um, until we cut out the caffeine in 2018, then I've never thrown up again. Because the caffeine, I found out, was the huge culprit for most of my issues, too. And I've been a, a caffeine and sugar addict since I was very young. But my mom started giving me caffeine when I was five years old. And so um, I just had that habit of uh, just that overdoing. I would, I would drink too much coffee, no water. And then I would be, you know, famished. And then, oh, I'm starving. Oh, and I ate too many almonds. Or, um, oh, my Amazon order is about to be here. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, I hope, I hope, I hope they bring what I ordered. Let me see. I'm trying to get my organic beef, so you guys will get to see if it arrives, what I ordered. So I always order um, organic beef and um, uh, sometimes organic greens. I don't remember if I had, I think I did some organic kale, and then Topo Chico's, and then garlic, and um, I'll do rosemary and thyme and black pepper as my seasonings. Um, and so that's about the only thing we ever get, and then, you know, occasionally some um, household things like dish soap. But that's it. We do uh, organic beef. Organic kale, organic collards, organic garlic, and water. That's our diet. And variations of that. We do some of the steak. That's pretty expensive. So we usually just do the ground beef. I'll go to the cupboard and I'll show you guys. The other day they sent the wrong one. I was bummed because I like to do the 93% because you do want to watch your fat intake. That's where these people are not 100% wrong. You can't just eat fat to your heart's content either though you have to do everything in moderation so yeah if you overdo the fat that's not a good thing but it's not just about the fat it's 100 percent about the sugar sugar is way more of a culprit for weight gain than the fat and the other thing that's going to happen when you overdo sugar is you're going to get candida overgrowth and that's what i had and that is a nightmare um, and it, it it'll just drive you insane you'll get so many side effects from it um You'll get bloating, nausea, headaches, um, tiredness, so extreme lethargy, um, low sex drive, you don't feel like doing anything, you're depressed, you gain weight, you feel constant, constant cravings for salt and sugar, like constant. I had that for years, that's candida overgrowth, you guys can look it up, it's a huge
huge issue. It's from eating all of the processed sugary foods and the antibiotics and the GMOs and all this crap that we're eating. Most people have a candida overgrowth issue. And what that is is candida is a fungus in your stomach. Everyone has it. It's a yeast. But in when it's at bay, it's fine. And we just live, they function. But what happens when you eat bad food, you get an overgrowth of these candida. And they live off of sugar and they um, live in your fat cells. So when you're eating way too much sugar and then also you want to watch your fat when you're trying to get over candida because they're stored in your fat cells. So um, you got to watch your sugar and fat. So where some people think it's just sugar that you do have to watch your fat too. That is true, but animal fat is not bad for you. <laughs> it's not. I mean, you'd have to eat a lot of meat for it to be an issue. I'm telling you, we eat six pounds of meat a day and we are healthy as oxes, as they say. But yeah, I get frustrated because what are people's plans if we all stop eating meat? Like, what are we gonna do with all these animals? I mean, it's just ridiculous. Now, I don't agree with animal cruelty. Hear me out, I love animals. I feed the pigeons even though I get told not to and it's illegal. We still feed them, and I'll feed them till we leave because we're leaving soon. But I've already gotten rid of, written up about out here because I love animals. But you can eat animals, and you can still love animals. That's a part of nature. And dying is not the end. So when they say, oh, an animal has to die for you to live, yeah, that's a part of nature. And they get to go to a better place. I'm sure it's a lot better than grazing here or, or walking around in the poo like pigs do. So... Uh, this concept of like saving the animals so that they can like, graze longer on earth. No, they go to the next dimension, which is better for them. So you really want to make them stay here? Like even if we weren't butchering them, what are they doing? They just graze around, you know what I mean? So people, people have dogs and cats and then they get this weird idea that like, oh, we can't eat the animals because I have a dog and a cat and I have like 10 dogs and 10 cats and I can't imagine eating the fluffy. Well, yeah, well, you're not eating your dog. They do in some countries, yeah, in the Philippines, they eat your dogs. My cousin, my, not my cousin, my, uh, my good friend was Filipino, and she said that your neighbors would eat your pets if you left them outside. They, they do eat dogs and cats there. A lot of places don't. But, so what? That's a part of life. You know what? I tried to kill myself. My mom died, my brother died. Dying is a part of life, and an animal has to die for you to live. Yes. And guess what? I would die for another animal for them to live if it came down to that, too. They said, I need to eat you to survive. I say, sure, I eat all organic, so I'll be real healthy and tasty, I'm sure. Eat me. I hope if an alien came, they'd eat me. I don't care. If they say, you are tasty, I want to eat you. I say, have a night. Good. Enjoy yourself. Because this concept that people want to live forever on Earth, too, is so weird to me. I'm like, I don't understand. I'm not saying I'm suicidal. I actually enjoy myself now. But I have been suicidal. But I'm just like, this concept of that, like, I'll do anything to not die. Okay, I went through survival school. I was in the Air Force for four years, and I was a flyer. So you go through survival school where they um, send you out in the field for like a week and a half, and then um, they capture you, and then they put you in a prisoner of war camp for a couple of days. And then they interrogate you. They, they torture you and interrogate you. And they couldn't get me to say anything. Because I'm like, well, why would I, if someone held a gun, they did, they held a gun in my head. Uh, I know people always train whatever. It feels pretty freaking real if you're ever in that training. I'll tell you what, you forget your training because your brain can uh, think that you're uh, somewhere, whether it's real or not, you know, when you because they make it so realistic and you've also not been able to eat and sleep in three days and you're standing in a cell and it's, they're playing this crazy, annoying, static music all night long and it's just insane and they to take you out just to torture you. Then your brain can start to be like, hey, this seems pretty real. But anyways, they couldn't get me to talk because I'm like, why would I? I mean, all you have to do is shoot me. I don't care. Like, I, shoot me. I don't, I mean, the, the idea of like, well, I'll shoot you unless you talk. Sh shoot me. I don't get that. I, you see in the movies, oh, okay, I'll oh, go, I'll tell you. They're like, you can just shoot me. I ain't going to get anything out for me. I mean, I don't mind dying. That's not a problem to me. So you really need to let go. And you go, oh, I have kids or this and that. Well, your kids will go on too. I did. It sucks, but everyone is going to die at some point. And hopefully you die before your kids um, because it's worse for your kids to die before you. Um, I guarantee you. No one wants to lose their children, but everyone can accept losing their parents, even if it's early. You know, you still, usually your parents will go before you. So everyone is gonna die, and we, that doesn't, it doesn't, it shouldn't be sad about that. You know, um, 
Yes, it's sad if someone dies. Yes, that is sad. But I'm saying the concept of dying shouldn't be sad. Uh, now, I was horrified when my mom died. I, I, mean, I can't even describe it. I mean, I, I could, for about six hours, my roommates couldn't even figure out what had happened because I was just bawling under control. I found out in the car and I came home. I had a, a, a male roommate at the time. His name was Blake. He was actually, uh, he was a black guy, which people always tease because I was a super white girl. Black guy. We didn't date or anything. We were just roommates for three years. But we never did anything sexual. People never believe that. But I don't do that with roommates. That's, you know, you don't want to shit where you eat. <laughs> Anyways, so um, I came home and for like six hours I was bawling and he couldn't figure out what was wrong. He didn't know. And he couldn't get the words out. And when it finally came out, he felt bad because he thought my boyfriend had broken up with me. And then I'm like, no, my mom killed himself. And his dad had died when he was young. So he was like, oh, here comes my order. I'll get this for you guys. Oh, hold on. Hi. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Have a good day. All right. My order came. I just show you guys. Yes. He actually like brought it inside the house. It's so funny here. That I don't know why in the Amazon people, okay, they have all over the app it says, we'll leave it at the door, you know, because of the COVID or whatever. But they don't, here, no, if I don't answer the door, they don't leave it. They have it in their hand. They always hand it to me. And um, they'll just be standing there. I'm like, you can just leave it. I'll get it. So anyways, I love Amazon. So this was... Uh, Whole Foods through the Amazon, you know, I do it through the Prime now, but you can also do it through your regular Amazon. I don't know if you guys, in some places, if there's a Whole Foods, you can get it and they can be delivered within like a couple hours. But here's my Topo Chicos. This is what we drink. Um, this is all we drink. This and, you know, um, spring water and alkaline water, but no other beverage. And not since March 24, 2018, which was my birthday, that's why I remember that. So let's see what else we got. Great, I use these as trash bags now, these bags. Okay, I did get kale this time. So I got my organic kale. Organic kale. And that's better than that one. And then, oh, let's see if we got the meat. Let's see. Oh, yes. Feels like it. This is so good because when I have this meat, if it's, let's hope it's the right one, um, then I don't have to go to Walmart. So let me see. I'm going to have to work later. So this should be better if I, this is right. Actually, no, we don't have a car. So um, I have to get back. The Uber is ridiculous now. Oh, yes! You guys, I get so excited because it is very hard to get organic uh, these days, especially since COVID. Yes, look at this. This is amazing. They sent the right ones this time. So, yeah, we get, this is six, this, we will eat this today. This is what we eat. This is what we'll eat today. The greens, probably not all those greens, maybe, I don't know. And then, um, yeah, probably about that greens because we do three meals. That in the, uh, we already ate one though, so we won't actually, we'll only eat four more pounds. But this is the 93% um, organic grass fed. And I like the 93, so you only have a 7% fat. Because yeah, you don't want to overdo fat. That is true, but there is good and bad fat. But anyone that eats too much fat, yeah, eventually will get fat. I mean, if I was doing the 80%, I'm going to put on some weight because um, there's just so much fat in there. But, this concept that animal fat is bad for you is not true. Does that make sense? But yeah, you always don't want to overdo anything. You don't want to overdo fat. You don't over, over want to do. You want to overdo your carbs. You don't want to overdo. You can actually overdo protein. You can't. <laughs> I mean, protein. I don't think you can actually overdo. You can have as much protein as you want. Um, that's the cool thing about protein. You'll be stuffed before you do <laughs> Like, that's the thing about protein. It's so filling. So you only will eat so much that you're like, okay, I've had enough protein. But, okay, you guys. Um, so, so the bottom line. Oh, I was going to say real quick. Some of the things of, why, of how you can tell if someone's bulimic is, um, okay, the voice. So the super horse voice. The other thing is they often don't want to show um, right here on their stomach because that's where they're going to put a lot of weight. So what you'll see with a lot of bulimics is they wear things like um, really high-waisted things. Uh, they wear the skirts that poof out. 
they wear the high-waisted uh, bikinis, you know, that come up and cover the stomach. They wear things around their waist, like sweatshirts. They wear uh, clothes that they'll show this part, you know, of their stomach that's thinner right here, but they don't want to show down here because they'll get a pooch. And then they often will have, you know, sometimes thinner arms or legs, but they'll carry a lot of weight in their midsection. Some people will carry it in some other spots. They often have bloated faces. So even though, like, they're thin, their face will often be so bloated. Like, my face, as you see now, is thin. It was so bloated all the time because, um, for one thing, just all the sugar and stuff, but then also when you throw up, you bust the capil bud capillaries in, um, like, your face in, in around here, so it makes it puff out. And I had a super bloated face, and I hate it too because I get like the double chin always in photos. Um, the other things bulimics will eat a lot, usually for their size. So you'll see someone that's very small, but they'll be eating like a lot, and you're like, seems like that person can eat a lot, but they'll often blame it on that they have a high metabolism. Um, and they'll drink a lot of beverages because beverages are easy to throw up and they also help it uh, other food to come up easier. So bulimics will also drink a lot of water right before they're about to throw up. So they're just down water, down whatever it is, any beverage they have, because that will help to lubricate the stuff to throw up. Um, and they'll often starve themselves during periods and then have a binge. So you might have a friend that you think just never eats, but then they go in on their own and they binge in private. That's what most of the celebs do, you know, the, to most people say, oh, that person just never eats, they just eat so light. And then when they go home, they have a ton of ice cream and <laughs> candy and, and cookies and they make pastas and all this stuff. And so um, you'll see a lot of times the models uh, will be that way. So like Hailey Bieber uh, is bulimic. And I feel that she um, kind of got Justin Bieber into bulimia because I don't think he was bulimic prior to them being together. Like I can see like his signs of bulimia coming more because he actually used to be really fit. Now you can see his stomach is getting more, um, the stomach is always will, what will bother bulimics because um, their stomach is never the way they want it to be because when you starve yourself and you do that, your body will store the fat <laughs> in your stomach. It's where the word, that's your worst problem there. Area. You'll get the pouch right here, and it'll drive a bulimic insane because everywhere else they might feel thin, but then they just have uh, this nagging like stomach fat, and um, you'll start to see that when someone maybe used to be kind of ripped, and then they're still kind of thin, but they just have this like stomach fat and this little layer of fat kind of growing on on their body all over, and you're like, they're kind of small, but they just look kind of puffy. They start to get the bloated look, and that's from usually the candida overgrowth. So. so what happens when you're bulimic is you get a candida overgrowth for sure. So any bulimic has candida overgrowth, and candida overgrowth causes that bloating, and it also causes sinus issues and all kinds of stuff. Um, and it's a shame because uh, it seems that it's becoming very acceptable to be bulimic. Um, no one talks about it, but like they all do it. And you'll hear once in a blue moon, someone will come out and say, oh, I went to eating disorder recovery, but very rarely when most of the celebs are struggling with it, and we just don't hear about it. And they're lying to everyone, and you're thinking, how do they eat all that and stay so thin, and I'm trying to do all this and can't? It's not fair, because they're cheating. And if they're not doing bulimia, then they're often doing um, Adderall. A lot of uh, people are on Adderall, and they think that's all right. Adderall um, is basically meth. Um, you know, they give it for kids that are ADHD, but it's um, speed. And um, a lot of the celebs have been on it since they were children. Um, I know um, Kristen Bell is on it. Uh, she talks about that often. But Adderall is just speed, if you guys don't know that. So if you're giving kids Adderall, you're giving your kids speed, and speed is never a good thing, ever. <laughs> speed is meth. It's all the same thing, if you guys don't know this. It's all the same. Speed, meth. No, people like get these ideas that there's all these different drugs. There's not really. There's very. There's only a couple. Um, crack is coke. If you guys don't know that, it's the same exact thing. All the crack is is cooking coke. Um, speed and meth is the same thing. Adderall is the same thing. These oxys are just heroin. That's what the oxys that everyone takes. That's heroin. I mean, so there's only like so many types of drugs, and then you just have you repeat them, and then people think it's something different. Oh, Oh, this is from my doctor. This isn't speed. This is something. No, you're taking speed prescribed by your doctor. They used to do that more. You know, back in the day, like all of the old actors were on speed. Like we watch some old Elvis movies and stuff. Those guys are 
all that speed and they were going 100 miles an hour with those tap dancing and stuff, all the old musicals, all those actors were on speed because for one thing, like that was uh, prescribed by the doctor. It's like it was very common to get speed from your doctor um, and that was like acceptable. But now that's weird and now we think people, we see people on meth and we're like, oh, they're so insane, but caffeine is actually meth. Caffeine is a form of meth. You guys look up the definition of caffeine. Um, and so we actually have a whole society that are methed out on caffeine. And does someone that do, does meth, do they ever look good? Even if they're thin, they look terrible, right? Well, that's what's starting to happen with society. If you notice, people are starting to age, they're not looking as good. Like, as a whole, like actors that used to be thinner and better looking are looking older and fatter. Like, literally, look, ever, uh, ever look at old movies, look at like the 70s, and look at the size of people. I mean, as a whole, look at all of the, I get there's some fat people and thin people, but like the average size of people was entirely smaller than now, all of all the movies, all of the shows. And what's happening is because everyone is getting bigger with all of the GMOs, the hormones, the steroids that we're giving to the, to the animals and the veggies and fruits. And so when you digest that, then you get bigger as a person, not just fatter, bigger, bigger bones, bigger hips, bigger structure, bigger everything. You're just getting bigger, just like how the animals are getting bigger. Because they want to pump up the animals, but now you're going to consume the same thing that they gave to the animals to pump up. You're getting it through the animal or the fruit. See, vegans will use that excuse, but you get it from the fruit too. They give the hormones and steroids and antibiotics and all that crap and the colorings and everything to get the fruit to look a certain way and the preservatives and all the weird stuff to get that fruit to last. If you eat organic fruit, you'll find out it's often, often shaped, weird shaped, um, small, uh, it spoils so fast. All that, the thing where your apple can last for like ever, that's because they're messing with it, they're modifying it, which all of that is not good for you, that's not for nature. Bottom line, you have to eat, well, eat what's from nature, what was here way before before we started messing with food. So even think like beverages, what was around water? It wasn't all this other stuff. Back in the day when you were in the wild, you didn't have coffee. So you gotta go back to the basics if you want to feel good. And I'm very, very passionate about that because prior to figuring out what to eat, I kept wanting to kill myself and my mom did kill herself. Um, ever since I figured out my diet, this is the last thing I wanna do. I'm having a blast, I'm like, feel great this is fun every day is fun and so um, people can say I don't know what I'm talking about and that meat is terrible and that I'm dying from eating meat but I'll tell you what I'm 35 years old and I've never felt better in my entire life for real like even when I was a kid I didn't feel this good because I was still eating crappy food and I started drinking caffeine at the age of five so I've never felt good I actually always had stomach issues and everything because um, that food is never set well with me all the gluten and dairy and all that crap and so now when I eat this food this is the best I've ever felt and every day I feel great it's amazing so all right guys I'm gonna close this up because I gotta start getting ready for work but thanks everyone for watching Jedi I read you around yeah I'm done yeah I'm done this is my double chicken guys that was fun oh please subscribe yeah follow whatever whatever channel you're on